sure you have a uh, good first aid kit. I had Suzette put ours together. <laughs> um, but she went through and put through important things uh, um, that you should have in a first aid kit. And then I put it in a Tupperware container so that it stays dry. You don't want it to, that stuff to get wet. Um, make sure you have several sources of light. Um, this is a light we use for camping all the time. Um, this is a candle lantern. I have extra candles for it. Uh, another important thing is a radio. Uh, this is a crank radio. It also has solar power. It's also a flashlight. But it also has AM, FM and the weather band channels. So you just turn to the weather band channel and you automatically get the weather station. So you get the weather report right away. So that's something that's kind Where of... Where do you find something like that? Um, I got this one from Mountain Equipment Co-op on Avenue. Yeah. 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 So, uh, a lot of this stuff you can't get from sporting goods stores or even a lot of water. Uh, light sticks for light is another thing. Uh, if you've got kids, you know, that's a good thing to give them to hold on to for light. And then, of course, there's all the toiletries that you want to pack in your pack as well. Um, just some emergency things, duct tape, wire. I've got the sewing kit, the fishing line, fishing hooks, um, knives, multi-tool, lighters, uh, cooking set, the rain poncho. And then there's important papers. Um, one thing I never thought of, but with talking with Brother Drozowski here just before the meeting started, uh, money. They say you should have money in your in your 72-hour uh, kit. Do you want to just take 30 seconds and tell, tell Sure. Um, there was a natural disaster, of course, in parts of Ontario, Quebec, and Ontario, uh, and New York with the ice uh, uh, freeze-up a few years back. The, the church felt that the church was pretty well prepared. The church was pretty well organized in those areas. Found some immediate things. Um, well, there's no electricity, so ATMs don't work. People won't take credit cards. They, if you have bills, and you have a $20 bill, but your purchase is $10, you won't get change. Nobody wants to give you change, because there is no change. There's no more. They can't get it from anywhere, and don't know how long they'll be without. The suggestion was is to carry um, loonies, you know, get three or four, the whole package, because that's what you'll, otherwise you'll lose money. Credit cards don't work, and people think, well, you know, if I have one credit card, I'm covered. We are not. So that was that was the the main thing that uh, that people found themselves in in, in deep trouble over. Okay. And by the way, the same thing trying to fill up with gas if you're moving your car. So the suggestion always they found out is always to keep your car full of gas and enough money to pay fill, right? But with the uh, pumps that we have now that. You put your credit card. How do you do credit card? Well, some of them. I guess with oh, electricity, yeah, they, they don't work. I guess. Is that no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Things to think about. <laughs> Uh, and it is illegal to store gas in your backyard, so don't do that. <laughs> Chain it to the fence beside the cemetery. And the USB, uh, that's the uh, Bob Wayne's house. Uh, run over to my place, it'll be the middle of the river. Next to a sump pump. That's right. Okay, and just one last thing. Uh, whatever backpack or whatever, some people, some of these websites suggested, you know, a Tupperware container or... Uh, or some of the other things uh, to put your stuff in a pail. Uh, whatever you put it in, you want to make sure you can carry it. So make sure it's something comfortable that you can carry your 72 hour kit. Ours is a hockey bag with wheels. With wheels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing is, you need to go through your 72 hour kit uh, semi annually or at least once a year. If you're putting foods like this in, make sure that the expiry date is, if you're going to do it once a year, make sure the expiry date's at least a year away. Yes? One of the best things I saw on one of the church website once was people, like you're supposed to change your your, your clothing and your food. Every, they, 
they what they would do is for conference weekends, yes. their kids could open up a thing and eat everything out of it that weekend and then refill it. Yes. Like that. So that was twice a year yeah. they had a thing, yeah. but they, yeah. they yeah. always yeah. knew when they were going to do it. Yes, that's what I heard the Grunners do. Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you have children, you have to update the size of the clothing for one thing. Uh -huh. And then, yes, uh, replenish the foods with fresh, with fresh things as well. And uh, in our country, of course, seasonal clothing. In the springtime, you want to put different clothes in there than you would in October. So uh, you want to make sure that you have seasonal uh, clothing and uh, things in there too. So, so that's just a quick overview. Um, there's some handouts uh, here and just a few little free samples to take. We thought uh, the cocoa for the high priest, the fruit for the sisters, and the primary kids could take the matches. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> there's just some free samples there and some handouts there. Uh, and that's about it. Is there any questions? Uh, yes. Anybody that's on medication, but should they have medication? Yes, that's on all the lists. Make sure you have your proper medications uh, stored in your 72 hour kit as well. I just saw one once, if your family ever gets separated from each other, that um, if the kids are carrying their own backpack or whatever, that you should have a paper in there with all your info on it. Yes. And the picture. Yeah. Or you could have uh, communication right? so equipment. That's what we have, so that if we're separated, we can do that. Um, you know, a 72 hour kit is a lot of weight. It is. And so I think what you might want to mention is the container, the backpack, because uh, if you've never carried a ba backpack, everybody thinks it's pretty easy, you know, carrying it around. It's not. So you need to get the right kind, preferably one with a frame. Well, the thing is to put everything in there, carry it around for a little while and make sure you can carry it and that's going to be comfortable. You can get carried away. Uh, communications, yeah, I got lots of those 72, uh, oh, 72, uh, those two-way radios you yeah. know, that you could keep in contact with them, supposedly up to 40 kilometers, but uh, you yeah. get carried away with what you put in there. Is there another question? You can also use the little suitcases with the wheels and the handle. Yeah, whatever works for you. And just one other thing, because we have lots of little kids, and, uh, like we've packed a bag for each of my kids, but I know that each of my kids cannot carry a bag. Yeah. So I have to be able to carry up to like three bags, probably. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so, Realistically. So how are, yeah, so how are you going to do that? I'm going to struggle and pray. <laughs> <laughs> the entire time. Well, we talked a little bit about that. We thought, well, if we're...